comments? Hi everyone, just going to give it a little bit longer just to give um, more people the opportunity to click on and join us this evening. Um, I hope you are all keeping well, I've had a nice day, I'm hoping you can see me okay in this light as um, it is getting um, a lot darker, um, a lot earlier. Um, but just to introduce myself, um, my name is Rachel, um, I'm a member of the postgraduate recruitment team here at Cardiff and um, I was also a postgraduate student at Cardiff too. Um, and in this session, um, as you can see, um, I'm going to be chatting to you um, about university um, interviews, interview techniques um, and what to expect from interviews this year. Um, as you may be aware, um, as you've signed up for this session, uh, we are running a few different sessions this week um, just to give you a bit more information about university, student life um, and studying with us. Um, tomorrow we've got a personal statement session and um, the day after that we've got a student life session with some of our current students um, so you can hear from them um, what it's like to be a student with us and then on Friday um, we also have a session on student finance too. Um, so if any of them are of any interest to you um, I definitely um, recommend coming along to those as well. Uh, but yeah, when applying to university, depending on what university and course you have applied for, um, there is the possibility that you are going to be invited to an interview. And we do know um, that, universe, um, that interviews can be um, a little bit of a daunting experience for students. Um, so in this session, I'm just going to discuss the different type of interviews, um, preparation advice, um, top tips and sort of errors to um, avoid. I'll be covering how interviews are normally run um, in normal circumstances, in normal years. Um, but I will, of course, also be touching upon virtual interviews um, and how they will be run um, in this not so normal um, of years. So if any of you have got any interviews with us over the next couple of months um, or interviews with any other universities, um, oh, hopefully this session will provide you with a little bit of help and guidance. Um, if you do have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to pop them into the Q&A. Um, I'm joined by my colleagues in the background, um, Charlotte, Hannah and Ewan. Um, they'll be answering some of your questions um, throughout the session. Um, and then towards the end of the presentation, um, I'll also be answering um, some questions on camera for you too. Okay, so let's get started. Ooh, sorry guys, don't know what's happened there. Bear with me one second, there we go, that's better. There we go, little technical hitch there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've got a quote here from one of our current students, Oliver. He's one of our medicine students. Um, and he says, the main thing that an interviewer wants to know is who you are. Just try to relax. Easier said than done, I know. And showcase yourself at your best self. Um, so today we will cover um, some top tips on how to showcase yourself. Um, and hopefully you will find this session useful and informative. Um, and that it will give you the confidence to um, approach interviews with a positive attitudes and help you perform to the best of your ability. So first up, let's take a look at why university, universities interview. Obviously, universities interview because they want to find out more about your interest in the subject of your choice and why you are interested in it. Um, what makes you want to study it at university level? Have you been inspired by your current studies? Um, what topics have inspired you? Um, it may be that you just have a passion for the subject and you want to take it further, um, or maybe you already know that you want a career in that specific area. They also want to know more about your interpersonal and subject related skills, um, whether you have the skills necessary um, for a space on the course and in the future profession. Um, if you had a part-time job, if you're, you've been part of any clubs um, or societies, what skills have you gained through these various roles? Whether it's teamwork skills, problem solving, communication skills, universities just want to see and find out more about these um, interpersonal skills and how they relate to your course. They also want to hear about your future goals and aspirations. They want to know what you intend to do with your degree and where you see your degree taking you. 
whilst universities do look for students who are going to have a great time at university um, and get involved, um, they also want students who are going to put their degree to good use. Up next, we've got that they want to learn more about your personal experiences and what you have learned from them. We will cover this aspect um, in a little bit more detail later, um, but for courses such as medicine, um, dentistry, nursing, healthcare sciences, work experience um, will be a necessity. Um, but for any courses, any work experience that you can have um, to reflect on will be beneficial. Um, and as I said, we will cover this a little bit more later. And of course, to just understand what you can bring and contribute to the course. Um, overall, universities just want to find out more about you if you're going to be a good fit for the course of your choice. So what do they look for in these interviews? Universities want to see your academic capability and your achievements so that they know that you will manage the demands of the course. They want to see your enthusiasm and your commitment so that they know you have a passion for the subject, that you're going to work hard, contribute and be an active member of the course. They want to see your knowledge of the subject, that you've got an understanding of the course, that you've gone away and done your research. And as we just touched upon, they want to see your transferable skills such as communication skills, teamwork, and they want to see confidence in your own abilities. So who will be interviewed? Universities will typically interview for healthcare subjects such as medicine, nursing, dentistry and more. They do interview for these caring professions that require strong communication skills and empathy. They do also interview for practical courses, um, subjects such as architecture and art and design courses may invite you to an interview and ask you to bring a portfolio, whereas subjects such as medicine, uh, not medicine, sorry, such as music or musical theatre, um, they may also interview, interview um, and invite you um, to do an audition. Universities can also interview for popular courses. Obviously, these can change year on year, um, depending on demand and what courses are more popular that year. And then, of course, some interviews like Oxford and Cambridge will interview everyone um, for all of their courses. Um, so we'd recommend checking each university you apply for so that you will know um, exactly what to expect. There are different types of university interviews. You may have a one-on-one face-to-face -on -one interview. This is where the entire interview is just you and the one interviewer who is asking you questions. Um, this just has a conversational format um, as it's just the two of you. You could possibly have a panel interview where there may be two, three or possibly four interviewers taking it in turns to ask you questions. Panel interviews will allow the university um, to hear the opinions and perspectives um, from a number of different people on your performance. Um, so they're not just getting one person's opinion. Then of course you can have a group interview uh, where there would be other applicants in the interview with you. In these interviews, you can um, bounce off one another answering the questions um, and it is a bit more of a discussion. Um, group interviews can allow you to show your team working skills and your communication skills and um, it, it allows you to show that you can work well um, as a group. At a group interview, it is important to be yourself and make sure that you contribute to the, to the discussion, show the university who you are and what you can bring, but at the same time, you do have to let others contribute and listen carefully to their contributions to, to so you've got to try not to completely dominate the discussion whilst still showing your skills and capabilities. As we briefly touched upon, um, you may be um, invited to an interview, depending on what type of course you apply for, where you will need to bring along a, por a portfolio to show examples of your work. Um, this tends to happen with courses such as architecture and art and design courses. Um, for example, in Cardiff Met for their art and design courses, and they will ask you to bring along a portfolio. Um, you would usually be expected to display your portfolio and discuss what it contains. Um, it could be completed pieces of work, um, work that's still in progress, um, or research examples, um, just pieces of work that demonstrate your interests, skills and how your ideas have been developing. 
And then for other areas such as music um, or musical theatre or drama courses, you may be invited to an interview um, where you will also have to um, have, an, have an audition. It may be you need to perform a piece of music of your choice, um, which would be of a certain standard, of course, um, or you may need to undertake a sight reading test um, or something along those lines. Or you could have a multiple mini interview, which are referred to as MMIs. Now, these are the most popular type of interviews um, for medicine and related courses. And these are the type of interviews that we have in Cardiff for our medicine, dentistry and healthcare science programmes. MMIs are broken down into stations or mini interviews. Uh, they usually last around 10 minutes or less um, and you rotate around them. Before each one, you will be presented with a scenario and given a little bit of time to prepare an answer. You'll either be asked a question by an interviewer um, or you may have to engage in some sort of role play scenario um, whilst an interviewer watches. Whilst you may think that MMIs sound a lot more nerve wracking or intense um, than a standard interview, you can really use them to your advantage. And in my opinion, they are better than the standard interview formats in that you have several chances to get it right. If you mess up one station or maybe you feel like that one area didn't go as well as you'd hoped, that is not your interview down the drain. You can start afresh, afresh with each new station. Schools want to see how multiple people interact with you. So through MMIs and having more than just one interviewer, universities are not just basing their decision on the subjective opinion of just one interviewer. In MMIs together, the stations will assess your capabilities in different areas. Universities hope that MMI interviews will let them better assess your teamwork and communication skills and maturity, empathy, um, situational responses and overall thought process. Here on this slide, you can see more specific examples of MMI stations in the interviews that we conduct in Cardiff. These are normally how many stations that you would be assessed on in normal circumstances, um, but for the virtual interviews this year, there may be less stations. I won't be able to go into specific course interview procedures in too much detail, um, as, as, as these still are being finalised at this point. Um, but we will come on to some sort of general advice um, for virtual interviews soon. But this will just give you a little bit of an idea of the types of areas and um, that you would be assessed on. Please note that there won't be any interviews for physiotherapy um, or radiography this year, uh, but most years in normal circumstances and um, they would hold MMI interviews. So if any of you are in year 12 um, and are interested in these subjects, um, then yeah, please take a close look at this slide. Um, yeah, you can see all the different areas um, and stations that you can be assessed on. Again, there may be less stations this year, but it does give you a, an idea of what you can expect and, and prepare for. These areas um, include areas such as problem solving, teamwork, the ability to think on your feet. As you can see, one common um, area across all of these disciplines is communication skills, which are really important. Um, communication and listening skills are not just important for these interviews but for working as a medical professional from communicating with your patients um, having to explain complex medical issues um, to working with your team and colleagues it is a key, a key skill and a trait that all medical schools will look for however um, this is not just the case for MMIs when it comes to communication skills communication skills um, will be important for any type of subject and any interview um, that you may have. Um, part of the university's impressions of your communication skills is based on the way you present yourself, the way you come across in the interview, your ver verbal communication skills, um, your body language, um, your level of eye contact. And whilst you will be judged on your communication skills across all of the MMI stations, um, the one on communication skills in particular will focus on your ability to communicate what can be complex information um, clearly and with empathy and sensitivity, which again is another common area across these subjects, empathy, 
caring ethos, care and compassion. The most important thing um, for anyone who well, works in a healthcare profession is the patient. The patient should be at the heart of everything that a medical practitioner does. Um, and universities want to see your ability to empathise and your desire to provide care and support to others. Additionally, uh, make sure that you understand key um, ethical concepts relating to medicine, like the four pillars and patient confidentiality. It's also really important to know the university. As you can see under medicine, one of the um, areas that you'll be assessed on is why medicine slash Cardiff. They will want to know exactly why you want to study medicine at Cardiff specifically. So you will need to be prepared to answer that and show that you have done your research. Obviously, um, as I'm hoping many of you know, Cardiff University is in Wales, um, but there may be some applicants who are not aware of the Welsh, Welsh NHS, um, which is a slightly different system um, to the NHS in England. So be aware of where your placements will be also um, and the different environments that you'll be working in. Um, you could be in a big hospital in a city or you could be in a small GP surgery in a small seaside town. Um, the geographical variation um, in Wales will affect the way um, that you experience your medical placements. So do your research into the course, into the placements, how the course is taught. Um, in Cardiff, um, our medicine course is case-based learning, um, which is an integrated patient-centered approach to learning, um, which means our students benefit from early patient contact in year one, um, and then they put their medical knowledge um, into, context, into context, applying what they have learned um, to help their patient. Um, you would be expected to be um, familiar or aware and, and know this, um, so make sure you do your research into the specific institution. Keep up to date with medical news. Um, questions may be inspired by stories or debates in the media um, and practice talking about current affairs, um, especially those in the um, healthcare system with family um, and friends, as this will definitely help you articulate your ideas and your thoughts on the day. Similarly, um, MMIs, um, for MMIs, practice is really important. Whilst you can't prepare answers to specific questions, in the interviews you will be expected to provide a long answer with examples um, for each question. So try and practice giving long detailed answers against the clock. Time yourself, make sure you are providing um, full answers. This is gonna help improve your confidence um, and your ability to do this on the day. Um, and, but at the same time, don't be tempted to over prepare your answers in advance. It is much better to carefully think about um, the question or the scenario that you are presented with on the day, but at the same time, get used to answering the type of questions that you may have um, in detail, um, providing full answers um, over a couple of minutes. Okay, so as I've mentioned, um, this year um, interviews for our medicine, dentistry and some of our healthcare programmes um, will be virtual as they will be across the board um, for the majority of universities. For medicine and dentistry, they will take the form of um, virtual MMIs and for some of our healthcare programmes, again, the interviews will follow um, a similar approach as the MMIs and they will be using um, the same types of questions. For our occupational therapy interviews, um, they'll be sending out um, a case study, um, which will be discussed um, during the interview. Um, as I said a little bit earlier, I can't go into too much detail about the course um, specific interviews at the moment, as these details are still being finalised, uh, but you will receive um, more details and information regarding the setup of your interview if you do have one with us um, and how it's all going to work um, a little bit closer to the time. However, please don't feel apprehensive about virtual interviews. Um, we are in strange, strange times, but on the plus side um, of virtual interviews is that you will have less stress in certain ways. You won't have to travel for your interview. Um, you're going to be able to do them in a familiar setting um, from the comfort of your own home. So just prepare for them in the same way that you would prepare for a normal interview. 
as I mentioned a bit earlier, research the university, research the course, research the, the place, the location uh, beforehand, um, as especially for any uh, medicine, dentistry, healthcare programs, and um, you are going to understand, need to understand the healthcare needs of the university area. The interview is still professional, so please act as though you are going to a normal interview. Dress smartly and still arrive early to the interview. Log on early um, and give yourself plenty of time um, ahead of the interview um, to get set up on your computer and to get everything ready. You will still be scored um, on your communication skills as you would be in person. Um, so you'll need to maintain good body language um, and eye contact um, as well as remaining polite. Practice video interviews beforehand with friends, family, teachers and anyone um, that you can just to get, you, get used to the nature of communicating over camera and audio. You may have had some experience with this over the past couple of months um, as we all have uh, but it is still a good idea to get some practice and experience in on either Microsoft Teams or Zoom um, just to get used to communicating in that way as I'm sure we've all experienced before sometimes if there's a little bit of a lag um, you, you know you may end up talking over somebody or something like that um, so yeah just get used to um, communicating that way and answering questions and um, that way too um, and as discussed MMIs um, will require students to give long answers um, with lots of examples each time so again practice giving long answers against the clock Take a look at the General, General Medical Council website and the Medical Schools Council website. They've got some good guides on virtual MMIs, um, which will be really useful for you. You will need to think and plan ahead for these virtual interviews. You will need to find yourself a quiet space at home uh, where you won't be um, disturbed by any family members or your dog or your cat so uh, make sure you've got a quiet space just for you um, ready for the interview have access to um, a suitable computer um, with working audio and um, video functions so make sure your webcam is working okay you've got a clear webcam that your mic is working okay and that they can hear you clearly um, you will need to check obviously that you've got a wi-fi connection and making sure that it's a stable connection if maybe you have wi-fi that does tend to cut out quite a lot you may need to plan around that um, if you do have any issues with anything like this um, if you don't have access um, to any of these um, resources we would recommend um, getting in touch with your school or college um, to see if they can help Virtual interviews will typically be held around the same time as physical ones usually would. Um, I know for example our dentistry MMIs are normally in January and the virtual ones are planning to be going ahead in January too. However, there will be some exceptions. Um, as I did touch upon, um, we would normally have interviews for um, our physiotherapy and radiography courses. Uh, but this year offers are going to be made um, using a value-based approach on the UCAS statement. Um, so check with each specific um, institution for their plans um, for interviews this year. Okay. So there are three stages to the entire interview process. We've got number one, plan ahead. Number two, the interview itself. And then number three, what's next, the next stages. Planning ahead is absolutely key to the success of your interview. If your interview will be in person, so next academic year, if any of you are in year 12, um, do book ahead um, for any travel or accommodation, uh, book that in advance. For those of you who will have interviews this year for virtual ones, make sure you have access to all of the necessary um, resources and equipment um, ahead of the day. Read through your personal statement um, and be familiar with what you have already told the university about yourself, as it is likely that they will touch upon this and ask you questions about things that you have said in your statement. Again, I cannot emphasise enough, research the course and the university. Your interview is your opportunity to show why you want to go to that university specifically. 
You don't really get to do that in your personal statement um, as you are obviously writing a more of a general statement that's going to um, a number of different universities. So your interview is really your chance to share your knowledge and your desire to go to a specific university to study. Really, you know, show them why that university in particular is where you want to complete your studies. This goes for every type of interview, for every subject, know your university. Plan to arrive or log in early um, and plan your outfit ahead of the day. Make sure it's clean and ironed um, and that you're not rummaging um, at the bottom of your washing pile for what you want to wear um, an hour before your interview starts. Um, and just make sure you do know what format to expect so that you don't have um, any unexpected surprises on the day. For the interview itself, again, dress smartly. You will need to look professional and as we said earlier it's the same for virtual interviews. Make sure you are dressed smartly. This will help you make a good first impression and show the interviewer that you do take your studies seriously. Have positive body language um, and show the um, interviewer your smile and make sure you're smiling. Sit up straight, don't slouch um, and have good eye contact um, throughout. Think about what you say and how you say it. Give yourself time to think about your answer. Don't just jump straight in. Um, you know, think about what they're asking you and make sure that you are answering it properly. Uh, but at the same time, don't jump around the point either. You know, make sure you are answering the question that they are asking. And give examples where you can. Draw upon your experiences and your work experience lean on these and use specific examples um, in your responses. Again, we'll come on to a little bit more guidance on, these exam uh, on using examples in a little bit. Be positive about yourself um, and be confident. You've got every reason to be. Don't second guess yourself or second guess your answer. Um, you've done really well to get to this stage. Um, and just depending on the nature of the question, Often there are no right or wrong answers. Um, it's all about your explanation um, and your thought process um, that the interviewer is interested in. And if you don't understand a question, it is perfectly okay to ask the interviewer to repeat it. Um, and if you don't understand it, you did hear it okay, but you don't really understand what they're asking, it is okay to ask them to clarify it too. Um, it's much better to ask for clarification um, rather than trying to answer a question and that you haven't really fully understood. And last but certainly not least, try to relax. Um, whilst it's understandable that you will be a little bit nervous um, and that's fine, that's totally normal, totally natural um, and it can be a good thing. Um, being a little bit nervous can bring out the best in you um, but it's just important not to let your nerves um, take over completely. So relax, be yourself and try and enjoy the experience and then you'll find that you can answer the questions easier and perform to the best of your ability. Again here, yeah, we've got some typical interview questions um, that can be asked. As I've said, they will ask about the course and the subject, why you want to study it, if you've got any particular areas of interests, um, if there's any specific topics or any books that have inspired you. Um, this is one of those areas that you can sort of um, prepare um, well ahead of time. So think about that course and subject and why you are applying for it. Again, they will ask you about the university. Be prepared to discuss why you want to attend that university um, in particular. Be familiar with the unique selling points of the universities. Um, so for example, in Cardiff, if you're interested in medicine, um, you're going to have early patient contact from year one, um, which is one of the things our students are um, most enjoy about the course. Uh, we're also one of the only medical schools left um, that do um, dis dis dissections, dissections, I'm not saying, I can't say that right, sorry. Um, but then for dentistry, if you're interested in dentistry with us, um, we are the only dental school in Wales. Um, we have a small dental school, maybe you're, you want to be part of that small um, sense of community. So just show that you've done your research into the specific university um, and why you want to be part of that course in particular. 
stay on top of current affairs. We touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, read the news and keep on top of what's happening in the areas that you're interested in as questions uh, may be inspired by um, stories that are in the media um, and in the news at the time. And again, practice with your friends and family ahead of the day. Um, and again, if you do have um, MMI format, remember to time yourself as well. In the interview, when you are talking about yourself and your experience, we recommend using the ABC guide, which stands for activity, benefit and course. This will help you when giving um, examples. Um, and as we said, you should always give examples in an answer um, if you can. Discuss the activity and talk about what it, what it is that you have done. However, it is more important to talk about how this activity benefited you and what skills it has given you. Then it is key to relate these to the course that you are applying for. You need to show um, that you have reflected on your experiences um, and what you have taken away from them. This may be work experience that you have done in person um, or any work experience that you have done online. Um, we know that it may have been difficult this year um, for you to get any physical work experience, um, especially in any care related settings. Um, however, online videos, podcasts um, and any other material can count as experience if you have learned how to reflect on it properly. If you reflect on what you've seen, heard and learned over the past couple of months, um, then that can be really valuable. Um, the value of any activity you undertake is in what you have learned and how that has helped you to decide to um, embark on a career in that area um, and how you know that it is right for you and how um, you are right for it. So what you have learned um, through any of your experiences, um, how that's benefited you and then how that's going to benefit your colleagues and your patients um, in your intended career path. So bear this in mind when answering questions. Um, reflect on any people-focused experiences that you've had that provide a service, care, um, support or help to others um, and just show that you understand the realities of working in a caring profession. Um, so if you have had any experience um, in a care home, instead of just talk, saying, you know, oh yeah, I went to a care home um, for two weeks um, and I did this, you know, you say, this is what I learned when I was at the care home. This is how I intend to use these skills with patients in the future. So bear this in mind, the ABC guide and when you are talking about your experiences. Overall, universities are looking for someone who can communicate well. Um, this is important for both your contribution to the course um, and your future career. And we've touched upon communication skills quite a few times. Um, they are really, really important um, as part of the interview and then for your future career too. They are looking for somebody who is well organised, that you're going to be able to balance the demands of the course. Um, you need to be personable, enthusiastic and dedicated. Show your passion for the course, show why you want to be part of it um, and also show that you have the ability um, to apply your previous experiences to the course, whether that is from any work experiences that you've had um, or whether it is through any part time jobs um, or any clubs or societies. Think about the skills that you've got, the experience that you've had um, and how you can use that in the course in the future. Okay, so after the interview, what comes next? Make notes on how things went. Um, this may be helpful for any other interviews, um, any other future interviews that you have coming up. You can maybe give yourself um, some tips on things to remember for next time. Similarly, you know, reflect on how you felt you did. Is there anything that you need to work on? Um, are there any areas you feel like you would like to improve on? Um, and you can then spend a little bit more time prepping and practicing um, for these areas. And think about your experience throughout the interview and how you felt. How did it make you feel? Um, how did you find the people? Um, do you feel positive after the experience? Do you feel positive about the university? Do a little bit more research again into the university and really think about if the university is right for you um, and if it is where you'd like to spend um, the next couple of years. And then whilst it can be difficult to do so, you need to sit back, um, relax and wait to hear back. 
Okay, so some top tips here for all university interviews. As I've said many times, it is all in the preparation. Know the university, know the course, know the subject, keep on top of current issues, practice questions and time yourself. Be confident in yourself and your abilities. You've done really, really well to get to this stage um, and you should be proud of yourself. Um, but at the same time, you know, be polite, approachable, friendly throughout the interview. Answer questions fully. Don't give one word short answers. Give yourself time to think about the question and what you are being asked. And make sure you are answering the questions um, in depth. Again, especially in MMIs, um, whilst you will have a few minutes to answer the question, um, you know, practice yourself, um, time, practice answering the question within a time frame. And give examples when you can, reflect upon your experiences and use the ABC guide. And of course, ask for help if you need it. Okay, that was quite a little lot of information for you all there. Um, I'm just going to open up the Q&A box and see if we've had any questions in. I did have one question in beforehand, um, so thank you for if you've sent any questions in before. Um, there's one we've had, which is, let me just find it here, sorry. For courses such as dentistry, how many MMI stations will there be and how will the manual dexterity station be done virtually? Um, so if you sent this question in, thank you. Uh, we have managed to check with the School of Dentistry. Um, this year there's going to be seven stations for the virtual MMI um, and there's not going to be um, a manual dexterity test um, this year. Okay, so you won't have that aspect um, as part of the virtual MMIs. Okay, I've just popped it open the Q&A box one second. I'm just going to take a look through. We've had a couple of questions in. So I'm going to see if I can pick some of the best ones to answer that are most applicable for all of you. Um, if we have had any really specific questions in, um, we're gonna, we will try our best to answer them um, as well. I'm just going to pick through a couple of them. So if you guys just bear with me. Sorry guys, just bear with me. We have a quite a few in. So I'm just going to... If so, we've got one here. If the station was to last six minutes, oh sorry, that's just popped away. I'll find that with a gain so I can answer that one live. There's another one here. Okay, how long should an answer be at an MMI station? It roughly, you know, you will get sent a little bit more detail um, ahead of the time. I'll just bring up my screen for you again here so that you can see the I'll share this screen with you. So it'll, give you a little bit more information again on the timings on the type of areas uh, bear with me okay as you can see here yeah you know roughly it's going to be six minutes per station or five minutes per station um, and the question that you will be asked will you know you will be expected to fill the majority of the time um, answering that question. Um, sometimes, you know, they may be more than one question as part of the station, uh, but you will be expected to provide full answers. Um, so I hope that does help. It can vary, you know, depending on the subject and the, um, the nature of the station, um, but roughly you are looking at six minutes per station and um, which will be um, during which time you will be expected to be answering um, the questions. Okay, just look for another one here. Hi, should we look at the screen or the camera um, during the interview? Now, this can be a little bit tricky, I guess, for um, all of us, because like I think it can vary sometimes depending on your, your laptop or like where your, your webcam is placed. Um, I'd recommend looking at the webcam um, as often as you can, um, providing that um, eye contact. However, you, I, would, I would expect, you know, if you do look at the screen a little bit, then um, that wouldn't be the end of the world. But yeah, maybe try and look at the camera. That would be um, 
my main bit of advice there. Um, try and as if you are talking to somebody, look them in the eye, look at the camera, but um, I wouldn't worry too much if you do tend to look down to the screen a little bit. For dentistry, um, is there a panel interview and an MMI or just an MMI? Um, I, for dentistry, we do do MMIs. That's the main um, interview format for dentistry. Yeah, it will be an MMI if you apply for dentistry. So I'm just clicking through. We've got quite a few coming in. Just wondering. It's moving quite quickly, so just bear with me. What stuff is important that I know about the university itself? This can vary again, depending on the university and the course, but I would recommend looking at the unique selling points of the course. Why do you want to do that course in particular at that institution? why is the course at that institution kind of attracted you more than the courses elsewhere um is it the placement opportunities um is it any other extra curricular um opportunities so i'd say look into the course itself but also how the course is taught um, as I said, with medicine with us is case-based learning. Um, for medicine courses elsewhere, um, it may be taught differently. Um, so it's definitely about the structure of the course, how it's taught, um, the unique selling points of the course, and what particularly draws you um, to that course at that particular institution. I hope that helps. I know that um, is a little bit broad, but it's just about working out um, exactly why you want to go to that university over any other universities and showing um, why you want the place on that course because of those reasons. Okay. Just Bear with me, sorry guys, we just got quite a few coming in that are moving quite quickly, so I'm just... Um, trying to find ones that will be helpful for you all. We will get through answering all of your questions, um, but I just want to make sure that we... Um, let's get through them all. Some of these are just being answered as I'm looking for them, so bear with me. I've got one. Is there anything new you know about this year's medicine interviews? Um, at the moment, um, all the details are still being kind of finalised, ready for virtual interviews. Um, we do know um, that, yeah, they are just going to be um, the virtual MMIs. The number of stations we haven't had confirmed yet. Um, a lot of the information really regarding these is kind of what we covered in the virtual session virtual interview section um, it's just prepare as well as you can um, do your research into the university um, and just don't be too nervous about the virtual interview um, everybody's going to be in the same position um, i know there's probably a lot of apprehension and a lot of questions about exactly how it's all going to work um, but just prepare for them like you would prepare for um, a normal interview um, and um, just make sure that you've got access to all the resources and the equipment that you need ahead of time. Um, as I did say a little bit earlier, if you've got any concerns about that, um, we'd recommend getting in touch with your school or college um, just to see um, if there's anything um, they can help with. If you do have an interview um, for us with Met for medicine with us, um, you will be sent a little bit more details and a few a bit more guidance on exactly how it will work um, a little bit closer to the time. Um, all I'd say for now is um, start doing your research um, and planning as best as you can at this point. Okay, right, bear with me. I'm getting quite a lot of people asking me um, when they can expect their invites to their um, 
interviews. I'll be honest with you guys, I personally am not 100% sure. Um, I'm not sure if any of my colleagues in the background may be able to help with that, um, if they know when they can, you, you can expect your invites. Um, I think, again, it can vary um, from school to school um, and course to course. Um, if you do have a question like that, um, feel free to message me um, in the chat box personally um, about what course it is that you've applied for. Um, I can look into that for you and get back to you. Um, at the moment, I'm not exactly sure when you can um, expect your invitation, um, can expect the invitations, uh, but I can look into it for you. So like I said, yeah, go into the chat box, drop me a private message with your name, contact details, what course you're on, um, and I can look into that for you. Sorry, I can't be any more specific about that at the moment, but it can just vary from course to course, um, but we will look into that for you. Okay, I've just had some help from one of my colleagues there. He said, okay, most invites will come through from now until Christmas time, typically. Um, so you will be um, invited in the next few weeks, um, depending on the course that you have applied for. Okay, sorry, we can't be any more specific at this point. Um, but um, yeah, over the next couple of weeks, you will hear back. All right. Right. Got one here, are there architecture interviews at Cardiff? Um, I, we don't have interviews, but you will be expected to put together a portfolio. Um, so yeah, if you put together a portfolio, um, then that's the main part of the admissions process um, for architecture. Um, it's an electronic, I think it's an electronic portfolio. Um, so yeah, you'll be expected to um, deliver that, uh, but you won't have to come in um, for a, or, or log on um, for an, uh, an interview. Um, but yeah, you will need to um, put together a portfolio for that course. with me guys just look for um, a few more that can help a couple of you yeah a lot of you were kind of just asking me about when you'll find out about the interviews again sorry it's just going to be um, between now and Christmas okay so just to keep an eye out for that Okay, if you've got any other questions, please just keep them coming in. Any general questions that um, I can help with? Okay. I got, we've got some questions about when the actual interviews will be as well. Um, they, like I said in the interview, they will be hopefully taking place when they normally would. Um, it's normally kind of into. January time um, and you will receive a little bit more information um, about that as well. Okay, we've had other stations which you showed definitive. Now these ones that I showed you, they are, um, they are, once they are examples from um, stations and that we have used in the past. So it gives you an idea of the areas, as I said, um, this year for virtual interviews they may not be able to have as many stations um so you know you may not be expected to um answer you, you have a station on all of those areas um, but it did give you a, a bit of an idea on what to expect they are areas that have been used in the past um, in normal circumstances in normal years when we have all those stations um so we can't be a bit more any more specific on um which ones will be um, at the virtual interviews as we're, we're not sure, um, all of that is still in the planning, um, but um, they will give you a rough idea. Um, I'll share my screen with you again to that page, just in case any of you want to kind of take some photos of it um, or take any notes from it. Like I said, you know, it, it, it isn't definite you're going to be assessed on all these areas, but it just gives you a rough idea of the types of areas um, to think so I'll just leave that up in the background for you um, for a couple of moments. Okay, I've had one. If you don't meet the entry requirements, um, for example, one of the GCSE requirements, can you still be considered for an interview? 
for a lot of our courses for um, medicine, um, dentistry and healthcare sciences, um, especially when it comes to medicine and dentistry, um, you will have to meet um, the minimum requirements for GCSEs um, and A-levels. Um, to get to the interview stage, you will have had to have um, got the minimum requirements um, and it's a lot of emphasis also based on the personal statement as part of the process. Um, again, you need to talk about your work experience in that using the ABC guides. If any of you are in year 12 and interested in medicine, so you haven't actually applied yet, um, I would definitely recommend coming to the personal statement session tomorrow, um, as that will give you a lot more guidance on the personal statement and what to include. Um, so to get to the interview stage for these programmes, um, especially uh, medicine and dentistry, um, yeah, you will likely, you will have had to have met the minimum um, requirements for GCSE and um, and a level um, and um, ha, as I said there's a lot of emphasis placed on the personal statement too so you need to kind of overcome all of those hurdles um, before we get to the interview stage okay. <clears throat> let me see here just bear with me guys there's a few more coming in Just pop this open there so I'm not sure if you can see my screen still. I'm just going to turn that off a second. I'll pop that back up for you in a moment. Okay, keep your questions coming, guys. Like I said, I am still getting um, quite a few in about like when you guys will hear again, it's going to be up till Christmas or into January. Would the interview have any questions based off your personal statement? Yeah, yeah, we did cover that a little bit in the presentation. Definitely um, read your personal statement and be familiar with what you have um, already told the university about yourself um, as they can base a lot of the questions around the personal statement. Um, a lot of your um, work experience will be covered in your personal statement so they may want to ask you about that if you at any stage mentioned any particular books or particular areas or interests in your personal statement they may pick up on that as well um, and want to chat to you about that um, so i would definitely um, recommend um, reading your personal statement and being really familiar with that Okay, we've had another one in. Um, what does observational skills mean? Um, in medicine, um, basically, um, they would show you a photo and then ask you a question based on that photo. Um, so it's just really what you observe, um, what you have seen in the photo, kind of your, your gut instinct there, um, what you've observed, um, and then just asking you um, to comment on that. Bear with me guys, I'm just looking for um, uh, some more questions. We've got a few coming in. Okay, I've got, well, when do we get to show the university um, about our other achievements? A lot of your achievements you can cover in the personal statement. Obviously, the universities will get to see um, your GCSE results, your A-level results, um, but any other achievements that, you've, um, that you have, um, you can comment on that in the personal statement. Um, if they're work-related or kind of more personal or hobby-related, um, you can talk about them um, in the personal statement, the skills you've got. Um, from these achievements um, and then you can obviously intertwine them in with the questions as well depending on the nature of the questions uh, but obviously your personal statement is really your opportunity um, to sell yourself and um, to get to the interview stage um, so yeah you I really talk about my personal achievements in the personal statement um, again if you are at that stage um, come to the personal statement um, session tomorrow and um, that will hopefully help you Okay, I've had some questions coming in as well, which are quite grade specific as well. Um, 
again i'd suggest if you want to uh, drop me a message on the chat privately that's maybe something we can look into for you and um, i will be able to kind of go into details about kind of the gray boundaries and things at the moment um as that's quite complicated and long um but yeah if you want to drop me a message a chat on the chat then um we'll see if we can get back to you on that okay just taking another look through for those that may be helpful for a few of you. Um, I know I've got um, you and answering some of your questions at the same time. Okay, for medicine interviews, are you encouraged to speak for the whole time at a station without prompts um, or will the interviewer prompt you? Again, I think this can maybe, it wouldn't necessarily vary from station to station, but it may depend on the nature of the station. Um, you know, you will be expected to fill the majority of the time answering the question. Um, but, you know, like I said, for the one, like for the observational skills, they may show you a picture. Um, so, you know, you'll have a, a prompt like that, um, but for the majority of the time, and um, they will be looking um, for you to um, be answering the question fully using examples um, as well. Okay, we've got one. Um, if we are unable to make the interview, what can we do? Um, if you if you are given an interview date and you are unable to make it, um, you are able to request um, an alternative date um, if you cannot make the first offer. Um, so don't worry too much about that. If you get one through and you've got a bit of a clash, um, you can request another date, um, and this, um, which will work better for you. Bear with me again, guys, just looking through some here. How can we show um, teamwork virtually? This is where um, they'll just want you to draw upon um, any experiences that you've had um, in the past. Um, so you won't be explaining your teamwork skills. So you just need to think of examples um, of where you've displayed it um, at school, um, if you've had any team projects or group work um, or any extracurricular activities, maybe if you play for a sports team um, or anything like that. So yeah, um, showing teamwork virtually will be about drawing upon um, the experiences that you've had um, giving ex um, examples and fully detailed answers so yeah you wouldn't be um, expected to actually show it um, it's just more upon um, draw drawing upon um, your experiences for that one okay We've only got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to see if I can find some more general ones that will help all of you. Um, thank you for all of your questions. We have had quite a few in. Um, we, we are going to send an email out after this session with an email address on so that you can contact us. Um, so if you've got any questions um, that we may have missed, please feel free um, to contact us on there. Um, and we also have some members of our student recruitment team um, available to chat every Wednesday as well on our website. Um, so if you do want to come and have a chat, uh, if you've missed your question, um, then please feel free um, to get in touch with us either by email or come along to that event as well. What would the appropriate dress codes be for an interview? Um, as I said, yeah, you do dress smartly. Um, this can be um, for um, the girls, you know, um, a nice blouse, smart trousers, smart trousers, um, or a skirt, um, or or um, any males out there, you know, wear a nice shirt. Um, so yeah, you know, dress professionally like you would go into a job interview, um, like any other interview. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to wear your uh, wear a suit or you know your, your best dress but just make sure that you are dressed professionally um, and smartly too okay i'll just give this one more i hope this has been useful for you all um, and that you have found it um, beneficial and that it's given you a little bit of an idea um, of what to expect um, should you have an interview with us um, or any other university over the next couple of months. No, it's been um, a strange old year and um, yeah, the interviews are probably not what you 
first expected they would be um, but hopefully this has helped you um, and given you a little bit of advice and preparation um, ahead of the time so if you do have any questions um, please um, that we haven't got round to please um, feel free to email us um, and you can join our um, live chat on a Wednesday too um, if that works for you and we can have a little bit of a chat with you there um, but I thank you all um, for joining me um, somebody just said um, what's your email um, basically you will get an email from us after this session um, so that'll be, give you the contact details on there um, for you to contact us okay and um, so hopefully that will help you um, but yeah, thank you all for joining me on your Tuesday evening. Um, and again, I, ha I hope you have found it helpful. Um, any of you who are working on your personal statements, come along to our personal statement session on um, tomorrow. Sorry. And then on Thursday, we do have a student life session um, with a number of different students from different areas. I believe we do have a medicine student. So if any of you are um, do have interview with us for medicine and um, you can come along and hear from one of our students. So thank you all so much and um, if you do have any questions after this please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you.